Ladies and gentlemen, it's profile time. Woo! Um, oh, let's just go straight in. Franz Anton Beckenbauer. Ooh. He would have gone straight in. Yeah. The Kaiser. <laughs> yeah, the Kaiser. Yeah, good. Now we've done we've done many many a profile, but uh, this really is classic stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Let me tell you. Uh, he was born on the 11th of September 1945. Work it out. 22 years before the Summer of Love. Thank you. Don't sound so strange. You won't. But a year after the Summer of Hate. <laughs> <laughs> you just Cut. wanted to use that jingle. I did. Just wanted to use that sound effect. <laughs> People keep on adding them into the little box, and I keep on going, oh, how can I use this one? You Obviously, everyone thinks Pete's just some sort of maestro producer, but he carries around this utility belt with loads of different <laughs> sounds on it. He yeah. does this all day in, in yeah. real life. Yeah. Franz Beckenbauer, gentlemen. <laughs> oh? Must we? <laughs> Franz Beckenbauer. Uh, without a doubt, one of the greatest players and possibly coaches of all time. Mm -hmm. We're not messing around today. I agree with that. We're not. Me <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll my, carry on. Guess then. my endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, some people might say he he invented. I think perhaps maybe redefined the role of the sweeper, um, and he was probably. You'd go as far to say the best sweeper of all time, I think. Yeah. In that position. Yeah. He, do, he really does define that position, doesn't he? Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, and, and it was kind of an attacking defensive player, I suppose, in a kind of a weird, weird way. way. Yeah, yeah. He, he was. Um, very elegant on the ball, very confident, tactically superb, great leader. And this all gave him um, the nickname... Uh, the, the Kaiser. The Kaiser. Can we call him a libero? Yeah, I that, so. that's the Italian. Uh, yeah, but it's a similar. Yeah, the position. Uh, the, that's libero. what the Italians call sweeper, isn't it? Uh, there's a bit more to it than a sweeper. Yeah, uh, sure, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. That's what I'm saying. Um, yeah, but uh, a very versatile player. He started out as a midfielder, but um, obviously got his name as as it ha being um, the great defender he was. Uh, his career started at the age of nine when he played for the youth team of FC München 06, mm. and he joined Bayern Munich aged 14. Uh, three years later, he gave up his job as a trainee insurance salesman to become a professional footballer. It was a good think, decision. I think yeah. we're all happy. With the benefit of hindsight, that was the right choice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but who's to say he wouldn't have been a great insurance salesman? He probably would have been. <laughs> He'd have probably redefined his role in that as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He'd redefined, redefined the shape of insurance salesman for years to come. <laughs> <laughs> One can only assume. Um, he made his debut for Bayern on the left wing, <laughs> or as an outside left, uh, against FC St Pauli. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Well, we know then they're already uh, in the team. Yeah. That's, all that's the right. right. In, in 1964, and uh, in his first season um, in the regional league, he helped uh, Bayern win or the, achieve promotion to the Bundesliga. Because Bayern weren't a particularly fashionable side at the time; they were in the in the lower league, uh, not in the uh, prestigious Bundesliga. Um, but within a year of them going up, he uh, made his debut for West Germany, aged 20. Now, things just moved on rapidly for, for Beckenbauer. Um, he played... I mean, that was 1964 he made his debut. 1966, he was playing in a World Cup final. He <laughs> um, don't muck around. No, no, no. And, that's, and that's what we're talking about. He's here. redefining time. <laughs> 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 he certainly is, Pete, and that's why we love him. One of the reasons, anyway. Uh, his first appearance at a World Cup um, was a 5-0 victory over Switzerland, and he scored two goals. <laughs> That's not bad, is it? Bear in mind, he's a sweeper. Yeah, it's yeah. not bad. Or, or he was more of a defender then. Um, he used to get forward a bit. Um, and in the final, he was given the job to man-mark Bobby Charlton. Bearing in mind, he's 20, 21 years old. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, I didn't win, though, did they, eh? We right, bloody did. Right, <laughs> bloody. From our lines... Uh, yeah, <laughs> you're right, there, Jack. <laughs> Having a good time, um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, he said that um, he said that uh, Charlton was the, the the player that the Germans feared the most, and Beckenbauer said himself, England beat us in 1966 because Bobby Charlton was just that little bit better than me. Oh, <laughs> very um, nice but he won he won FIFA Young Player of the Tournament at, at, the, at the age of 21. It was, and he played a huge part in Germany, finishing second at that World Cup, and he was third joint top goal scorer it's incredible. at that World Cup. <laughs> what, uh, what an impact <laughs> on the world stage that man had. It's not bad. Not bad, that, that World Cup, was yeah, it? Yeah, not, um, not bad, that Franz. Not bad, this sport. <laughs> um, Bayern soon became a force in, in the Bundesliga, which was, a, which was kind of a new setup to the, the German league at that time. Uh, and they won the German Cup in, in 66 and 67, and they won the Cup Winners' Cup in 1967. Oh, good. Yeah. Very good. Um, he became team captain of Bayern in 
and led the club to their first league title. And this was when he really started to delve into the sweeper role, or the libero role, mm. as Luke quite rightly pointed out earlier in the profile. And it was the attacking sweeper game. It sounds almost like a contradiction, really. Yeah. Mm. Um, but uh, but that's that's kind of what it was. He, and he experimented a bit, and he would he would sort of mount attacks from the centre of defence. Um, and he'd he'd often watched. The, um, he admired very much um, Gian Sinto. Um, Facchetti, who was the, uh, the, the the internationale and uh, Italy left back, who again kind of kickstarted the whole wing back kind of thing that the, the Italian did, and he wanted to adopt a similar kind of role at centre back. And uh, in in uh, soccer, the world game, um, it reads: the role of sweeper appeared a perfect launching pad, since the sweeper himself was never marked, lurked deep at the back, and could pick his uh, could pick his moment to surge upfield. Sort of like a quarterback role, really. Oh yeah, kind yeah. of really. Um, unfortunately, he wasn't given this uh, freedom to play um, for the national side, but th- but that time would come, Pete. Don't you worry. <laughs> just, just just a weird role, isn't it? Like a defender with free reign. Yeah, it's yeah. Just really <laughs> odd. Well, there's, it's old Campbell we used to love it. We, I, yeah. I mention it as much as I can. But Tommy Vermaelen loves it as well. Yeah, yeah. There you go. True, it's Philly like... Palbert loved it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he does. <doesn't, laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is a valid point. Pete. Yeah, you know, and we like valid points. Um, so he was, as I say, he was captain of Bayern and. Uh, at the, towards the end of the, the 60s and into the 70s um, Bayern really started to become a real big force in Europe and, and another couple of outstanding players I had was Setmeyer and Gerd Müller Müller of course mm. now World Cup Mexico 1970 he got his revenge against England in the quarterfinals when they won 3-2 and, and he got one himself mm. um, but uh, perhaps uh, the most memorable of his displays was in the semi-final against Italy when he dislocated his shoulder but he carried on. Um, I think they'd already used their substitutes. He carried on with his injured arm in a sling, um, and it went <laughs> the whole extra time. And Italy won four three, um, and then and Germany got uh, third place. They beat Uruguay in the Beckham third. Beckenbauer let them down there. Well, <laughs> they lost four three. <laughs> yeah, he only had a dislocated shoulder, running around a pitch with his arm in a sling. You'd never be allowed to do that nowadays. No, exactly. it's, it's madness. But he has fond memories of Mexico. He said 1970 was a magnificent tournament. The fans were fanatical, and the stadium. I love this. And stadium security wasn't quite so intense those days. You could pretty much do what you wanted to. There was just one armed policeman who sat outside the entrance and watched the whole ground. Very good mind. Some of these stadiums at the Aztecs are 110,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, that would be unthinkable today. Back then, it was simply simply more relaxed. The games in Mexico were colourful. Uh, the country laughed and football danced. He oh, recalled. that's nice. Um, but yeah, so Germany finished third in that World Cup. So he's finished second and he's finished third. Um, in there. And in uh, 1971, he was made captain of Germany. Um, and this was when he started to put his... Uh, his sweeper role right into the national team. He could really get stuck in there. And the following year at the European Championships, mm. Beckenbauer took that sweeper role into international football and Germany won the trophy beating uh, Soviet Union 3-0 in the final and Beckenbauer was voted European Football of the Year that year and under under Beckenbauer's uh, leadership Bayern then won three successive Bundesliga titles and three successive European Cups Class. Incredible. <laughs> he got a lot done. Well, <laughs> didn't he, there's, there's no arguing about that. They beat Atletico Madrid in the final 4 0. Um, they beat Don Revy's Leeds 2 0. That was in 75. And they beat Saint Etienne 1 uh, 0. And uh, and because they won the cup three times, they got to keep. Um, yeah. You know, they, they, mm-hmm. if you win a hat trick, you get to keep a trophy there. Uh, and they also won the World Club, um, the World Clubs Cup in in '76 over Cruzeiro of uh, of Brazil. But his biggest achievement, without um, a doubt, on his on his playing career, was uh, to captain his country to a World Cup victory in his home city of Munich in 1974. And of course, it was a memorable final against Holland and, and mm-hmm. Johan Cruyff and, and co. Um, and and this meant that uh, Beckenbauer uh, is only one of two players in World Cup history. Wolfgang Overall, Overath, uh, I think is how you pronounce that, is the other. He's got the complete collection of medals at World Cup, gold, silver and bronze. Oh, good. Ooh. How about that, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he became the first captain to lift the new FIFA World Cup trophy as Brazil got the Jules Romay trophy. That mm-hmm. kind of finished in 1970. Yeah, they got to keep that, didn't they? Yeah. They did get to keep that. And he was also... Um, the, the, that German side became the first national side to be European and world champions simultaneously and France obviously accomplished that in, in 2000 he was then voted European Footballer of the Year for the second time in 1976 but in 1977 he accepted a uh, two and a half million dollar contract to go and play for the New York Cosmos in the North American Soccer League Nazzle <laughs> 
<laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, and he stayed, He was there for four years and won. He won the soccer bowl uh, three times, <laughs> right. even winning things for the Cosmos. He wins wherever mm. he goes. He's exactly. a winner. We talked about the Cosmos in, in, a, in a previous profile, of course. When he moved um, to America to play, that that was signalled an end to his um, international career. But one he could be very proud of indeed, and he made over uh, hundred. He made hundred and three appearances for his country, and he became the first German player ever to break. break through the uh, 100 cap barrier however that, well, he wasn't done with uh, with European football he, he had a spell in the, for the Cosmos and then he came back with Hamburg um, SV in, in 1980 to 1982 and he won the Bundesliga title again with them <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, and then he went back out to the Cosmos to um, to, to finish off his win some other there. stuff oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just to won the sperm race let's not yeah, forget that yeah, well yeah, yeah. Um, coveted trophy yeah. <laughs> he probably got to keep that he probably won it three times yeah, yeah. exactly Beckenbauer in uh, in the eighties was given the um, the West German national manager job, which was quite a, a big appointment at the time because he had no coaching experience at all. Mm. His apprenticeship was served gaining qualification for the nineteen eighty six World Cup in Mexico. Mm. Incredible! Mm. So um, straight in there, and he and he took a not a particularly great side to the final. Yeah, well they've beaten off Argentina. He went one better four years later. Um, and it, you're absolutely right. In uh, in 1990, Germany became undefeated world champions. It's interesting what you say about him because I always think of him, and I, and I don't know him obviously personally, but I always <laughs> remember him as like a, a man of real like, dignity and stuff. Yeah. It's interesting what you said about what he said in the 66 World Cup final. Oh, Bobby Charlton was just a little bit better than me because yeah. apparently in the semi final in the World Cup 90, after Germany beat England on penalties, um, and, they, and a couple of the players had to go through for a drugs test. He said that you know, and, and I think it was Stuart Pearce or someone said, "Oh, if it was us and we won, we'd be dancing around celebrating." And he said that um, the two German chaps—I forget who they were—just carried themselves with absolute dignity and, yep. and sat down, didn't celebrate in their faces, shook their hands, said "good game" and stuff. And I wonder if, if Beckenbauer influenced them to do that. Well, I think, yeah. I think Germany have got a, quite a tradition of doing that. They're very good winners, if you know what I mean. But I, do think, you? I think, yeah, I do, and I think um, I think Beckenbauer kind of typifies that. Really. Yeah, I, I agree with that definitely. Um, but he um, he became uh, the first man. Um, and he's only one of two. The other is uh, Mario Zelgalo, who has won the uh, World Cup as a coach and a player. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, a, a, as captain and as a coach, should I say? Um, and Beckenbauer said that uh, I would say 1990 in Italy was the most important to me. It doesn't come any better than managing a side to victory. Um, and after that World Cup, he, he then had sort of brief uh, manager spells at, at Marseille. It, not particularly successful there. And then he went to Bayern and he guided them to a Bundesliga title and a second uh, brief spell with uh, Bayern. He, they won the uh, UEFA Cup and, of course, he moved upstairs as club president. But um, I shall end with a quote which I think sums the man up. He said that uh, it is not the strong one that wins. It is the one that wins who is strong. Oh. In you come, son. Come on in, friends. They always have such fantastic quotes. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine I, I hair on the back of your next time. I can't like, it's not enough that they're incredibly good footballers yeah. or managers. It's just they, they've got to be incredibly well spoken as well.